Melinda Haynes, license number 102308. Why do you attract negative people into your life? Now, this is going to go pretty deep. There is a theory out there that has to do with more psychodynamic. It has to do with our childhood upbringing. And I do believe in it pretty much. I think that we do um, learn things in our childhood. We learn patterns in our childhood, ways of interacting and relating to people in our childhood. And those things are kind of ingrained before. Maybe we even had the, um, the verbal skills or the, um, the developmental awareness you know, for example, um, cognitive development happens in stages and phases and over time. So if we're children and we haven't reached those stages where we can say, hmm, you know, that's that kind of issue or this is what that means and that's over there. When we're children, we can't do that. We can't pick that apart. We can't say this is your responsibility. This is his responsibility. This is my responsibility. And this other thing here is is because this is life. You know, we can't control a lot of things that happen in life, and it's just, it's nobody's to blame. It's just something that, that happened, and now we need the tools and the skills to work through it. When we're kids, we don't know that, and we don't know, you know, can you imagine somebody being six or seven, eight years old and saying, hmm, my parents do not have, you know, the emotional maturity or the coping skills to teach me how to deal with my grandmother's death. So those kinds of things happen to us in our childhood. You know, we have maybe um, a dysfunctional kind of family, chaotic, something's going on, something's going wrong. And as children, we are egocentric, okay? Children are egocentric, meaning they, they focus on themselves and they kind of think that they are responsible for, um, you know, the world or the way things are. Or if, if mommy is in a bad mood, for example, if mommy's depressed, you know, I don't know as a child, I don't know, like that's that's something that she needs to work on, you know, with her own self and her therapist and her medical doctor and whatever. I don't know that as a child. I think as a child, oh, you know, mommy looks sad. I'm going to go clean my bedroom and that's going to make mommy happy. Or I'm going to draw her a picture and that's going to make mommy happy. Well, as a child, when we go and we do that and it doesn't fix mommy, it doesn't make mommy happy again, especially like, you know, here I'm bringing mommy this picture, this artwork that I drew and mommy is like, oh, I don't care, I don't wanna look at it. Like, I don't, need, I don't need your stuff. When that's happening, the child then internalizes that as, you know, I didn't do a good job or, you know, my artwork isn't pretty or mom doesn't love me or, or whatever, you know, different kind of cognition that the child will have at the time in interpreting that reality. Well, so when that's going on and you imagine that happens like over time, you know, day in and day out, you've got whatever kind of parent, whatever kind of school teacher, whatever kind of um, neighborhood you live in, and you're getting all of this information. And as a child, you're trying to interpret it in a way that, um, especially when you're younger, and then when you, again, when you get to, to teenagers, um, you're interpret, interpreting it and like, how does it affect me and what, how is it about me? And so what happens is we take that into our adult relationships. So if I've experienced rejection by mom because she was depressed, or um, by dad because he was always at work, or by whoever else in the family who just didn't have time for me, or maybe school teachers who thought I was not smart enough, or um, didn't have the skills you know, to, to be anything exceptional or even normal, then I'm going to, instead of saying like, that's their problem, you know, this person has this kind of issue, that person's on drugs, or that person's doing this or that, or that person has, you know, this kind of, you know, issue that they're dealing with. Instead of understanding that, I take it with me and then I bring it into my other relationships in, in adult life. So I'm remembering, you know, I had to draw pictures and try to make her happy. She was never happy. I internalized that about me. So what, how, what kind of a relationship am I going to find as an adult? Somebody who is never happy somebody who needs constant like you know like oh here you know like you're in, a, in a, a sad mood or you're upset or you're destructive or you're doing something and I've learned because of my upbringing like it's my role to fix it I have the power to fix it and so then I keep trying and I keep trying and I keep trying and I keep trying and then I have these moments of realization where I'm like wait a second like why <laughs> Why am I doing this? And why do I find these people? And why? Because it matches. It matches with that um, that early learning that we got. It's kind of like if you if you learned as a child, if you learned how to speak and read and write English, and then somebody suddenly just plopped you down in um, a different country that that speaks a different language, 
you you would start to find people who spoke English. You would start to find people that spoke your lang your language, and you would connect with them. Or if you saw some writing, like a, a, a newspaper or a book that was in English, you'd go towards it. Because you'd be like, this is what I understand. This is what I know. It's kind of the same thing. Like, we got programmed. We got faulty programming early on in life. And we just kind of took that programming with us. And even though we say, hmm, this programming isn't really good. I don't want to work with this programming. That's not enough. We still have to go back in there and like relearn and re kind of rewire stuff in order to get to a place where we can say, okay, so now I see that this person right here that I'm interested in, they're, they're attractive or they're um, funny or whatever kinds of things, you know, draw me to a person like this person has those qualities but then I've got that undercurrent that pull of they fit my my um, programming they fit my pattern of interacting with people so now I'm trying to fix them or now I'm trying to make them happy or uh, you know I've got to earn love because that's the only way I got love when I was a child is if I earned it you know there was nothing that was unconditional it was all you know you earn your love here like I love you when you get good grades but I don't love you if you get a C God forbid a C minus, you know, things like that have been programmed in us. And so that's how we, that's how we interact. And then we find that person. But then when we're getting healthier, we need to say, okay, the undercurrent here, I recognize it. And so therefore I'm going to back away. I'm not going to go in this direction because I see that it's, it's just the, the same pattern. And if I go down this road in, you know, a year or two years or, or whatever from now, I'm going to be still sitting there scratching my head like, oh, how'd I get here? I thought this person was so great. I thought this person was different. And so that is what we need to break. We need to break that, that get rid of that undercurrent, do the rewiring in our brains, all that stuff. All I don't know how many different ways that, or analogies I can come up with to um, describe, but that's what we need to do. We have to go back in there and fix all that stuff. And that's where a good therapist is going to come into the picture. You know, when you find somebody, either, you know, a, ther a therapist or a support network, um, some kind of support group, things like that that you can work with and and they're gonna love you through it and you can be able to like bring your stuff up and put it out there on the table and go look this is this is how I learned to deal with this and this is how I learned to attract this person into my life and so when you're starting to to work through all of that stuff and you've got people around you at least one person around you that can support you through it and say you know what not today we're gonna do something different today and moving forward we're gonna do something different we're gonna hold each other accountable and we're gonna work through this and we're gonna reprogram our brains so that's one perspective it's not um, you know it's not the do-all and all it's just one perspective so tell me what you think do you agree with that or do you think that you know it's it's something different um, I know a lot of people kind of don't want to talk about childhood and they're like no it's old and it's in the past it doesn't matter but um, I think it does matter so um, Disagree? Agree? Um, put your comments below there and let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.